So let's start with our pastels. Oil pastels, oil bars are some of my favorite things. And the reason is because they are oil paint compressed into a little bar. How cool is that? So rather than having to use any sort of implements to move them, you can use your fingers and get really muddy and dirty with them. And there's actually, um, I think it's on Vimeo, someone had um, done a promotional video for me a couple of years ago and I made a big pineapple which now lives in interior designers and it was for... It was you made using oil pastels and oil bars. They are really fun and this is your time and I think it's a really good way to transfer into your paintings. So this is a time to get messy and to lose that preciousness and that perfection because what happens with these is they are so um, thick really to begin with that you, you control how much they move but also a part of them controls what application there is and this is why. So whenever I am using um, a canvas for this we will have a list of your colours which I'll go over in a second but you'll have had that in your little information sheet before this but I want to show you on canvas you can use oil pastel and oil bar on canvas if you want. Personally I would rather use a uh, paper or a board. This is a mount board that I'm going to use here now to do our to do our image on. But for the purposes of now I want to show you um, it holds on to the oil quite well. This little canvas board that I have here, these are really cheap. I was able to get a pack of these in uh, 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 what's it called? In the works and sometimes even in pine shops which is really good especially if you're using them just around the place or to practice. So just to give you an idea, oil bar, oil pastel, depending on what grade you get, you can have they can be as crumbly and as creamy as that, which I love. These are your Senelier ones, which I used to have to get imported from France, but now they're available worldwide and it is amazing. So that's a little one of it. A thicker thing is called an oil bar. So what they are is they're just a larger size and they're a bit more like big those big chalks that you work on outside with. There is a lot more movement in those. And what I do, as you can see, I thought it'd be better for me to use the pastels that I always use here in the studio rather than buying new shiny ones for you because it gives you an idea of how I work. That's me breaking one in half. And what I do is I just scoop it out with my finger often, right? Look and then you can put it on. So you can see how I control that, but also it controls me a little bit because it's thick and there's a lot of it. So that's for you very, very soft ones. It's also warm in the studio right now, it's the height of summer. So it's very warm, which means there's a little, they're a little looser. However, there are harder pastels, which if you buy, if you've bought just if this, you've got a starter kit rather than going for the colors that I've suggested, they'll be a bit more like this. Okay, and whenever I would do workshops with young people, teenagers in school, uh, they, these are the ones that they would use. So they just don't have the same movement in them. They're still great and there's still a purpose for them. But um, for what we're going to do today and for you to really feel and get involved in painting, I think the softer ones are better. So what you would do is you would just use that list that I have to get the Sennelier ones or to get the Windsor Newton oil bars, which are bigger, creamier, there's a lot more movement in them. However, if you just want to use the pastel part of this course as just a way to get involved and just not to worry about anything, then go for your harder ones, okay? Because there's still movement in them and you can still get your hands really involved so you get that thickness as well, okay? So what we're going to do is this part of our painting course is our David Hockney um, kind of abstract, warm colours, LA inspired piece. That has nothing to do with the fact that I just did an exhibition about LA. No, I've always wanted to do something like this. So what we're going to do is we're going to have like a little, there's a lot of flat roofs in um, LA and around the area. So I'm going to do a little flat roof. We're going to do a palm tree and we're going to have a seat outside the, the building here, okay? I'm going to use uh, charcoal. This is a willow charcoal, which I'm going to show you the outline to begin with. You don't need to do, you don't need to use willow charcoal if you don't want to. You don't need to use pencil. You can just put your colour straight on, but for the purposes of this, and so you're able to follow, I want you to see how to put a simple mould on, and then you really treat it like block work, okay? 
So I'm going to turn myself around. So what you're going to start with is you're going to start with your rectangular building. Okay, very simple. And then what you're going to do is you're going to add in your window. And then you're going to add in your door. And then we're going to add in just a little seat here, okay? So it's going to be a little seat. Because quite often people sit outside. So it can be Morocco, it can be LA, whatever you want. But we're going to add in our palm tree next, okay? Nice, simple palm tree. And then we're going to put a sign up on top of the roof. Really, really simple, okay? But I want you to just get so involved with the colours here. What you should have in front of you are, using your Sennelier or your Winston, um, your Windsor Newton ones, I want you to have three different colours of yellow. I have here an orange. And look, I'm really at the very bottom of that. So if you invest in the oil bars for this, know that they will last a long time and they never really harden. Or if they do harden, they get a seal that you just break back into it again. So I have a small one here of the Sennelier. And then I have a more, I'm going to break that one there, more mustardy colour. And I have a creamy colour. And I have, you should have as well, three different types of blue. So I again have two soft Sennelier ones. They're all pretty much the same, the same uh, tone of blue, but that there's a reason for that. I have a white and I have one, two, three different shades of green. A very popping lime green, which you can't really, there you go. And I have a more muted green. And then this I wanted to show you. So this just shows you how, like look how old that is, but I have confidence that I don't need very much of that color because what that really is for is just for our leaves and our palm tree. And that is the very dregs of it, but you can use your materials right until the end. Everything with art in my eyes is an investment. The thing with soft power with, with oil bars and oil pastels is they are very, um, they are pretty mucky. So get yourself a cloth. You're going to need a cloth. And what I have here is my board. If this was a page, which was just a regular heavyweight page from my notebook or one of your um, pads, one of your A4 pads that we have in the drawing part, then you would have a tape along the top. The board's kind of holding itself here and it's a very smooth edge. So what I want to do here is I want to put the oil bars on and then they can sit out from it. Okay, so this bit's gonna be cream and then we're gonna have our blue sky with a little cloud in it and we're gonna have our seat and our palm tree. Um, and I'm actually, this is gonna be lovely. How I'm starting is I'm breaking that and I'm taking a big chunk of it off and then I'm going to push into the board so that we start to get colour. I love getting colour on the page. So here again, I'm just manipulating it round. And really get your fingers involved in it in your hands. It doesn't matter if have those chunky bits off it, those little skin bits. You can take those straight off if you want. And you can go back in. You can do it a bit like um, as if you're holding the bar as well. You don't need to take the paint off it but I love being able to get my fingers involved and you're you get a real small or a real smooth finish whenever you use your fingers. I'm going to go over our lines okay we're starting to see now the building coming into shape Now you are literally finger painting. Did you believe that whenever you got this course? I'm sure you didn't. So all I've used now is I'm gonna to start to really get involved with this and really start to move the color over. Okay, and I'm meeting up to the lines. Now my lines are gonna be a little bit muggier because I used the charcoal to outline so you could see it. But here we are, okay? We've got to the bottom. And we have our retro 
David Hockney inspired building and that is a start, okay? So you've got your colour on to begin with. Now, let's get all that. We're at the minute what we're doing is all our flat colours, okay? So I still have these three different colours, the orangey one, the peachy one that I haven't used yet. So I'm going to come back to those. We're going to do the base colour now of our sky. I'm going to again use the big thicker oil bar. There's a little bit more in that in terms of volume. Um, so I'm going to just get started on that right at the top. Sometimes you will find with the blues that they are very uh, transparent. They become just not as thick. So that happens with oil bars. It well, it doesn't happen with the oil pastel, which I know can be confusing. But the oil bars, I think because of the, the density of it, sometimes they start to become a little bit lighter whenever they go on the page. And they don't, they don't whereas this is very creamy, very thick. There's a little bit more of an opaqueness with it. Okay, so you're really taking your blue, putting it in and around the leaves here. Again, you're just keeping it as thick and as free as possible. This is your time to really embrace that movement, get messy, and just keep on breaking it and pushing it up through. Okay. All those little areas in here. There we go. Now I'm going to bring the sky down to about halfway on the palm tree here. I'm going to do the same over this side. Isn't that fun? Look at that. Look at that movement in that, okay? Great. Now that's the base of our sky. So now we want to put in our window, which is gonna be white. Okay, oh, that's purple. Says, where's my white? Which is gonna be purple. Okay, this is the base color of the purple. It's a real mauve color. And what we're doing now is we're laying down the foundations of the flatness. So at the minute, this is very flat. If you look at any David Hockney paintings, they are very flat anyway. Um, I am the same. I like to get a layer on first and then to try and bring it to life. So that's what we're going to do with the next part of this. There we go. Lovely block color. Okay, and then what we're going to do is we're going to use that pink, that hard pink that I talked about before, which if you're using a beginner set, you might find that they are a bit more of this variety where there's not very much movement in. So let's use the pink to do the header of our shop. It's going to be nice and bright. You see, there still is that lovely solid feel about it, which you get with oil bars and oil pastels, but it just doesn't have the same thickness. It doesn't sit off the page as much. There we go, we're gonna go right to the edge. And I'm not too worried if pieces fall, if colors get on top. It's the other thing, whenever they are not as creamy, you have, um, often if one color interrupts another, it's harder to get rid of that, but it's okay. We can use one of our purples to layer that up at the end. Now let's go for our green, our base green, which we're gonna use that, um, look, the bit that I was talking about, those real dregs, okay? We're gonna get here and push into this. Okay, we're gonna really get the very essence of it. Waste not, want not. I think what it does, whenever you get to the end of something like this, and when you get to the end of the material, I actually think I would rather be the person that ekes it out and makes something beautiful who than someone who just throws it out and buys all the best stuff. I think that's where you learn your best and um, how to be your best as an artist is whenever you're restricted with materials. And I think that's why in art college they make you use all the waste materials. We used to go to a place called the Play Resource Centre. And when you went to the Play Resource Centre, there was, you know, tubs that butter came in or... 
uh, the spools that thread was on and they made us use those and try to really get involved um, as much as we could with the rubbish really that was left. So that is why I would rather have a little tiny glimpse of a good colour that I don't want to get rid of than to have to just go out and keep buying all new, new, new. Well, as lovely as it would be to do that, but I think it's important to use what you have. So that's the base of our green, okay? Now, we're going to do a night, the mustard that we had as well. We're going to use mustard for the base of the palm tree. And that is so lovely to do. What I want you to do is just to push it up to the top so you get it on your finger, like a blib, big blob of cream, working from the top and right down to the end of the trunk. And you're just manipulating it up brown. They're often a little bit more, um, yeah, rugged than what I had drawn out in the thing. So feel free to put that little zigzag in. Now, stand back and see it. So it's very colourful, very bright, very simple right now. I actually think what we should do is maybe just blue this all out. I think that would make it stand out even more. So revisit to your blue again, which you'd started on your sky. And let's put this all on it. The thing with oil bars is that if you are using a very thin paper, um, you can start to feel like uh, the, it bleeds. The colour can bleed out a little bit because they are oils essentially. So they do bleed if they don't have if they don't stop when they're on canvas. They stop. They've nowhere to flow to. Whenever they have movement in paper, they can sometimes spread. So just be aware of that whenever you are making your piece that you want to fill every colour right to each edge so there are no little blots because when the blots come that's whenever the bleed happens okay we're really getting involved with this guy and all right underneath our little chair and now the other side yeah i think that's better to have that good big block of color Okay. And at this stage, what you can do is you can, because there's so much movement in that, you can make that as smooth or as chunky as you see fit. Now, that's really our base, except for the door, actually. Oh, I need to move this guy in. There we go. Now, let's do our chair, this nice bright lime green color. Whatever your brightest color is. I love lime green, whether I'm doing soft pastel or paint. Um, often even if my paintings, if I can't get a strong enough green, I bring in the oil bar, like this little guy, because I just think this pop of color is so much fun. So again, it's just like finger work here. There we have it. Isn't that lovely? Now, whenever you're doing soft pastels with me, I talk about mugginess. So if you're doing a soft pastel piece and soft pastels are like chalk, so there's a lot of movement in them. If you are like me, then you will get muggy hands. I never like to waste that as I was saying before. So what I like to do is sometimes I use the mugginess. So say you're working with a gray or a dark green on the bottom um, of a rock or on the bottom of some kind of land. I'll happily clean those if I'm going to do a sky or just use the mugginess to move it around and to add a little bit of depth or shadow. Same here. I've used the green for the chair. So let's carry that up and put it into our palm tree little flecks of this muggy uh, combination of bright green and dark green. Look, it starts to become 3D and bring it out to life. Okay, now I have this nice peach, which I'm gonna layer up here with our pink and with our purple, but we're gonna do our door, this nice peachy color. Oh, that's a lovely color. So again, just taking it out using your finger to spread it down and across 
going to make it quite flat this one. Unlike with the oil bar, there's not as much in this, so you really have to use it uh, sparingly. Okay. And meet those, uh, so you have no real seam on that door. So it's a nice block color. Lovely. Now, so we've got a little bit of a colour here, a little bit left. So what we're going to do is we're going to just do a little block here on the side. Like a little square. There we go. We could also do a little line in our window. There we go. Okay. Now, what you'll see now is you start to really get colour on it, okay? There's colour, there's texture. It's um, really very abstract and very fun, I think. So what we want to do is we want to keep layering. Now, what we want to go for now is our other colours. So here with this mustardy colour, we had the cream, which I used for the building. We're going to bring that cream in and start to put in little um like little v's here which would be which are the the trunk of the tree okay so side 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 now what you need to do with this is it picks up other color because you're using your finger so push one way push the other load up your finger push one way push the other and again one way the other one way the other one way, okay. I'm just gonna put that in so it starts to get a bit more layered. Now, I'm gonna clean your hands, revisit for the mustardy color, and we're gonna put in a little bit of shading on our building. And the way that that's gonna come is that's mostly gonna come from the tree as if it's coming over onto it, but it's also gonna just be a little bit of um, so it's not as flat a color, so it's gonna be just very subtle. Um, integration here so what we're doing with this is this is another fun bit so you're integrating two colors because they're so creamy and so soft we're going to be able to put those in together so the way that that tree is coming here that's coming right over there okay and then over here a little bit say there's a windowsill so we're going to just get a little bit of shading under here and we're really just very gentle I'm not pushing the the colors on top of each other I'm really just integrating those together. Same with the, the door, so we're gonna have a little bit of shading over here. So again, just creaming those together, just like you would with sugar and, what is it, sugar and butter. Creaming those together, okay? And say so there's a little bit over here, the corner of the shop. There we go, so that brings it even a little bit heavier again for us. Now, let's bring our bright purple in. So our bright purple is going to frame around this little square and it's going to frame the whole work along here. But again, we're going to try and integrate it. As I was saying before, this is one of the harder so, um, oil bars that are all pastels that you may have in your pack. This is, I think this is a Sennelier one. So again, there's, it's squishier. Like I couldn't squish that one, which is the one from the starter pack but I can with this. There's a bit of movement in this, which we're gonna try and integrate in here. So again, our shadows will come underneath this tree here and here, and then a little bit over here. And we're gonna frame around this. Again, I'm just using a very light touch. And I'm just pushing it in there so that there's a little bit more, just a bit heavier, so a wee bit more there to work with, okay? We're gonna bring in this nice purple and we're gonna do a window ledge under here. So I have my finger loaded up, just pushing it out the top. You must be so used to that by this stage. So we just push it in and you're gonna just, as thick as you can get it, right across. Now I need a second one of those, so. 
that's that. And I think what I will do is we will use this purple for the legs of our chair. Now, it can be quite tricky, so try to use maybe even the side of the bar before it gets too melty. I'm going to just do two larger legs and then the two ones at the back for the smaller pieces. Okay. See, there's a little bit of purple I don't want to waste, so I'm going to do the corners up here of the window. Okay. Lovely. Now let's revisit our palm tree here, okay? Let's go back to it. So we've used the bright green for it. We have used the dregs of this um, earthy green. And then this is a slightly more mountainous green as well that we're going to use. And it is a Cinellier one. So it's nice and soft. And what I want this to do is to really start to dig into... Oh, it's not earthy green. Sorry, I've covered it in earthy green. It's actually more jade. But that's okay. The jade works with this purple, so we're going to go with it anyway. I thought about putting jade in, and I thought, no, that's for another time. But obviously it was meant to be. So I'm really pushing in that now. And then just across here, there's not very much left of it. So right over here. Just make sure every now and then you get a really solid colour. What can happen now is we can start to integrate so much that it becomes a bit um, diluted in how solid the colour is. So try and get a real solid colour on your finger and then blot that in. So that jade is really central there. And then over here, manipulate it out so it's nice and solid again. And up at the top. There we go. Lovely, vibrant tree. Okay, one of my fun, my favorite things to do is skies. People laugh at me because I can put a purple in a sky, I can put a pink in a sky, I can put all different types of grays, but there is nothing like working with the sky because you can really, skies are changing all the time. It's like if you're doing snow, if you were to do the snow scene with this, you would have grays, you would have blues, you would have yellows, you would have oranges. Nothing is a solid, solid color. Once you break it down, there's lots of different variations. So go for um, your second blue. We'd use this blue, which is a really mucky oil bar blue for the base, which is great because it covers a large area. Now what we want to do is to go for our corners with the darker one. I'm seeing if I have a darker one. Yep. It's not beautiful blue. Beautiful color. Very similar to what we have here, but not the same. So I'm squidging that out the top. It's the Sennelier one, so it's nice movement in it. And I'm going to start to integrate that in. So similar to what we were doing here, you're going to really start to bring in your different variations of blue and your movement. The colors are always, the corners are always slightly different on a page because they tend to hold the darker shades and darker tones. There we go. Get a real bit of movement in this. I'm going to put this in here and right up in. Just a very simple gradation of blue from what we had before. There we go again, get those nice big solid chunks in. So it really adds depth to your artwork. Look at that underneath, it really lifts the leaves. Over here. Okay, and then I'm gonna clean my hands. We're gonna go for our lighter blue now, okay? We're gonna really start to bring it in over the top here. So it starts to really lift off the page. Look at that lovely depth that's coming there. And then over here. What I'm doing is I'm really, I've actually used the whole piece for that because I get to a stage where all I want is thick and thick and I really encourage you to do the same. Keep it thick, keep it coming off the page at people. And there we go. Okay, so that's all our blues done. Now, what colour have we not used? I think we need a little bit of green for a bit of depth on our um, on our chair here. So again, I'm digging right in deep to the depths here of this. We only need very little on our fingers for this bit. It's quite tacky actually, that one. Maybe we need to rip it. 
there we go and the only place really is this is a bendy seat here so we're going to have just a little break in here on it and that's going to come down okay and a little bit at the top and there's your seat we're using the very tiny bits look at that they're so tacky now what we haven't used is our really bright orange yet, which is such a cool, look at that, a real bright orange. It is very similar to this blue that we used for all of it. Because what it is, is it is it becomes a little bit more translucent as I was saying. I think that's what happens whenever oil bars are that real high uh, bright colour, is they start to become a little bit more opaque, which is what we had. So I'm going to load that up with my finger again, like all times. And what we're going to do is we're maybe just going to add in a little bit of orange where our door is here and then a little bit possibly on the trunk. But for now, hmm, lovely. Right. Let's go. Okay, I'm just outlining the top there along the bottom just adding a little bit of br little brightness through to it isn't that fun okay we'll do it the whole way around let's frame it frame it with our neon we'll put a door handle on it as well okay so we get a little bit i'm just going to do a little which way would it open that way that way let's put it over here okay and let's so when you have a color like that that is so bright sometimes it can be lovely like the green was as a pop but the way I added the green in the top what that actually does is it softens the overall look of the piece and it means that there's a lot more harmony between the colors that are there so that's why I would say to people um, like right behind here which you can't see right now is an LA piece that I had done which was a sunset and I'd use colors over to the left that I brought in on the right because what that does is that just makes it easier for the viewer's eye to get it all and focus and all together and there's a lot more language and harmony between the palette so we're going to take a little bit of this orange and I know I said I wasn't sure but I think we need to put it into the trunk so these are just little marks by this stage your piece will be very thick like mine is now and I cannot wait to see what yours look like because the thicker the better and what I'm doing is I'm just adding in little flecks of our orange which is the uh, Windsor Newton oil bar. And that just brings in a bit more of a language, okay? There we go. Now, let me just show you this. So, as you can see, there is a lot of thick, thick oil bar in that. Did you think you were able to make something so thick look at that and so fun and so vibrant just using oil bars no paint brushes involved no palette knives involved just your fingers you basically finger painted a piece now i love the abstract feel of this what you can do is you can leave it totally like that or as i was saying at the start i like to mark everything out with a pencil or a piece of charcoal. So what I think I will do now is I just, oh, there's a bit of a tumble. I love to finish things off with a pencil. It's always been my style and I'd be happy for you to adopt that too. What that does is again, it just keeps the energy going on the piece that you have. This pencil is even quite blunt. I don't mind. It's not really about the pencil. It's about the scoring into it, okay? So you can just add a little bit more detail. So as it stands, it is flat but lovely and it has its thick paint off it. What I'm going to do now is I'm just going to work into it nice and free. Keep your elbow nice and loose. Going to do our nice paint, getting our windowsill and around it. Look at the paint coming off that. Look at that oil bar mixed. Going to go into the door. A little bit more depth in the door. Now, have fun with the pantry if you use the pencil really come out so you can see palm trees are chaotic and they're crazy let that be shown with what you're doing 
Same with the trunk. Even though you worked hard to get those layers, outline them. Get them a little bit more free and more flicky. Right. Same with our seat. And lastly, maybe bring in a little cloud or something in the background. You can have another palm tree in the background here, way far away. And there you have it. Look at that. Look at the way that just adds energy, doesn't it? So there you go. You have used your three to four different types of peaches and yellows. You have used your three to four different types of greens. You've used your purples and your pinks. And you have used, did I say blues? You've used your blues. You've got your fingers dirty. You've manipulated paint, which really is a great stepping stone for whenever we do oil paint and we use the palette knives because you're now learning the movement of paint using your oil bars. Cannot wait to see what you've made. Let's go and you can evaluate now. I would love you to fill in your little evaluation sheet about what it is that you find was easy about that what it is you find tricky, and how you want to use oil pastel in your chosen picture moving forward. Great, I will see you in the next video.